Good Wednesday morning, friends, or afternoon, or evening, or whenever you happen to join. For those I may not know, I'm Reverend Jennifer Finley, our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor here at First United Methodist Church. And this is our weekly time on Wednesdays to take a deep breath together, or if you're like me, still taking a deep inhale of coffee or tea, and to wonder together about how and where God is working in our world. Um, I'm not entirely sure God is working through Facebook at this very moment. I had to change my format this morning, so if I look a little bit different, that is that is why we're going to try this, this narrow format and see what happens. Um, but this is our time to take a breath together, to wonder about how and where God is meeting us in our midst. And on Sunday, um, this next Sunday, we'll be coming into the second week of Advent, and we will be lighting the Advent candle. On this past Sunday, we, we lit the candle of hope, and we talked some about that. And coming up this week, we'll be lighting the candle of peace. And I don't know about you, but this time of year can often feel anything but peaceful. It can feel entirely counterintuitive to be lighting a candle of peace when everything around us starts to feel frantic and chaotic as we move into this really full season, really busy season for many folk with family obligations and all the fun festivities that are wonderful but become a, can become a bit overwhelming. And so in this time together, as we travel through these weeks of Advent, we're going to be sharing some of the reflections from Kate Bowler. I mentioned her last week, and I, she met me where I am, and I thought I would offer this to you, if perhaps God might meet you in this. She begins with a, a portion of Psalm 85. I will hear what the Lord God speaks. He speaks of peace. Merciful love and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have kissed, faithfulness shall bring forth, shall spring forth from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. I don't know about you, but I know as I hear those words, and we hear them most Advents, that that can feel like pure fantasy. This idea that peace is going to reign and that justice will roll down that can seem like a fantasy in the midst of all that is swirling in our larger world and in our personal lives. And so I found God meeting me in the words that she shared after she shares that scripture. She talks about this time of year that can be anything but peaceful. And she says, each Advent, there comes a point when I need to lock myself in the nearest bathroom, take the deepest of breaths, light a candle maybe, and find a way for peace to be possible, even here and now in the chaotic too full moment, carving out a place where wholeness and shalom can envelop me, settle me, where differences dissolve and justice is satisfied. I don't know about you, but I imagine we have all had moments like that, for whatever reason, where we find ourselves simply closing the door into a small space and saying, okay, I'm going to take a deep breath and find some peace in the midst. I'm in my office today because I sometimes like to say that all the things are peaceful and not chaotic, but as you can tell from uh, the shelves behind me, uh, my calendar is a little chaotic. My desk is a little less clean than I might want it to be. And God met me in these words. She goes on to say, the Hebrew word for justice in Psalm 85 is often translated righteousness, being made right with others and before God in a natural, moral, or legal sense. Jesus is our righteousness in the place of new beginnings, a change of heart, of fresh forgiveness, of a new life that can spring up in the places that were once dried up and gone. Does that sound nice right now or what? In the meantime, we practice waiting by opening ourselves to the refreshment that God can rain down on us. Even now in our longing, in the midst of so much disarray and unsettledness, maybe here we can create more and more space for this by giving over our worries and anxieties to God, naming them to ourselves, and perhaps even to each other. 
We can breathe deeper when the heavy things we carry have been set down or at least shared with another. This is a form of peace, not only a momentary relief from our struggles, but also the recognition that there are things we humans don't know, can't know, that it's like this for all of us. Life is hard, but we don't have to go it alone. I loved how she phrased that. And then she concludes with this blessing. Blessed are we, the fearful, though we long to be people of peace. We can't lie. We are afraid. Afraid there won't be enough, enough resources, enough time, enough memories. Blessed are we who ask for your wisdom. Show us what to turn from, what to set aside. Come, Lord, that we might see you, move with you, keep pace with you. Blessed are we who ask that this Advent we might dwell together quietly in our homes. Come, Lord, that we might be for others the peace they cannot find. Blessed are we who look to you and say, God, truly we are troubled and afraid. Come govern our hearts and calm our fears. O Prince of Peace, still our restless selves, calm our anxious heart, quiet our busy minds. That's a beautiful prayer. And the thing I love about Kate Bowler's work and words is that she never ends it by just tying it up in a neat little bow. And in one of her other devotions, thinking about peace, she says, the peace of truth. She says, don't you love it when you open a gift on Christmas morning and think, oh, you really shouldn't have. But out of politeness and gratitude, you say, I love it. Maybe we have learned to perfect the art of the half truth. But perhaps our dishonesty to keep everyone comfortable has come at a steep cost. The cost of being known and of knowing one another. How many times have you answered, how are you, with great or fine or busy, while in fact you know you're barely holding it all together? Or actually could use a friend, or you don't want to come across as needy. Maybe today we can take a note out of Jesus' book instead. Jesus came to earth as a human so that he could echo back our story, so that we could hear our prayers and say, same, I get it. I love how she says that. Jesus has loved and lost. Jesus has cried and been frustrated. Jesus felt alone and forgotten. Jesus wanted things to change and knew that they couldn't. Jesus understands the fragility of being human and didn't try to hide it. He was honest with his friends about how he felt and what it was going through. Jesus' prayers were honest and true. Maybe peace starts with the courage to share the truth with someone and to hear them echoing back to you a clear and resounding same. Or, yeah, me too. A peace in knowing we are not alone. We are never alone. I love holding those two things together. This idea that in the crazy, busy, hard, and beautiful times of Advent season, we can acknowledge that there can be peace amidst the chaos. And also... We can truth tell to ourselves and to God and to each other because we have a God that came to us in human form that acknowledges, that knows that what it's like to need to be honest with somebody to say, same, I'm there, I'm right there too. And if that is you, know that our doors here are always open or our text messages or our emails. If you simply need someone to say, same, I understand, or to hear your truth telling about how life is right now. No, we are happy to do that because that is what we do together as a faith community, wherever we are. I'll end this with this, this blessing. It's a blessing from Kate Bowler. Blessed are you resisting the urge to reframe you who are sick and tired of easy silver linings. Blessed are you who risk sincerity, especially when the world around you craves a bright side. You who speak honestly about what is right in front of you. This is hard. Things might not get better. This really has gone horribly. There may not be a different way. Blessed are you in the gratitude and your pain, your pleasures and your limitations. Blessed are you, the truth teller. And what a miracle it is when your candor finds a chorus that echoes back, same. The friend who will hear it, the parent who will stomach it, the partner who doesn't roll their eyes, they hear you and it feels like a revelation every single time. May you feel your truths answered by this language of love, changing where you can and confirming where you can't. 
but loved, loved, loved all the same. Friends, we are loved in this season by God, by each other. And so as we light the candle of peace on this Sunday, as we prepare for that moment and move through that second week of Advent, may we be truth tellers to God, to each other, to ourselves, knowing that in that we are not alone and we are loved. Go in peace, my friends.